welcome to this video. My name is Tony Andrews and I'm the Product Manager for InfoAsset at Innovise. InfoAsset Manager comes ready-made for managing, maintaining and operating water and wastewater linear and vertical network assets. It comes with built-in data models and schema for both water and wastewater networks. But InfoAsset Manager can be extended to support more water and wastewater assets, such as those found in treatment plants. Or it can also be extended beyond the water sector into many other asset sectors such as public works and oil and gas. In this video we're going to see how to extend Info Asset Manager to support public work assets, inspections that are carried out on them, incidents that happen and what types of interventions can occur. So let's get started. Info Asset Manager supports three different types of networks, an asset, collection and distribution. Those of you familiar with InfoAsset Manager will already be aware that collection networks are out of the box and pre-configured to support assets, inspections, incidents and interventions that are common to wastewater systems and a distribution network does the same for water distribution systems. An asset network is where an InfoAsset Manager user with a suite license can decide to create a new type of system such as one that supports public works. You can see in the current geoplan that an asset network is being displayed showing assets, incidents, inspections and interventions that are typically managed by a public works department. The geoplan map key on the right shows what has been configured by an info asset manager user for this asset network. The user defined objects include roads, safety barriers, street lights, public amenities such as playgrounds with swings and slides, many types of inspections including safety barrier and playground inspections, incidents such as traffic accidents and potholes, and intervention work such as pothole repair, grass cutting, light bulb replacement for street lights, and trash cans and trash collecting. Collection and distribution networks can also be extended with user-defined assets. We'll see an example of this later in the video. Multiple network types can be displayed alongside each other on the geoplan. One as the primary network which is enabled for editing and the second referred to as the background network which can be viewed and queried. Simply drag in this case the sewer network onto the geoplan and the collection network showing the pipes and the manholes would appear alongside the objects in the asset network. You can also see recent pipeline condition CCTV inspection data located along the sewer pipes. With both the public works and the sewer network displaying in the geoplan, an info asset manager user can select and view the details of the assets, inspections, incidents and interventions from either network. Only the primary network can be edited with the background network available in read-only mode. Clicking on the road asset in the public works network reveals the details of the road in edit mode, as this is the primary network. And the Info Asset Manager user can navigate from the road to a pothole incident, or a recent traffic accident, or to component street lights or safety barriers. Selecting a pipe sewer asset displayed as a blue line in the geoplan reveals the detailed pipe data and information in read-only mode as it is not the primary network. Likewise, it is possible to select a sewer pipeline CCTV inspection that is associated to the pipe in order to display the detailed condition data and information managed and maintained in the Info Asset Manager sewer network. Even more impressive is the ability to identify very quickly all related associated and component objects. So for example, all connected, associated and component objects related to a road section can be identified on the map by selecting a road section and then expanding that selection. Using the browse related tool, it is possible to also show this in list view 
in the browse related object panel on the right hand side of the display. User defined objects inherit almost all of the Info Asset Manager functionalities that are common to the standard water and wastewater objects. For example, user defined objects are added to the Open Data Import and Export Centers for import from and exporting to third party data formats like Oracle Database, Shapefiles, or as in this example, a comma separated variable flat file. The SQL tool in Info Asset Manager can be used to query any of the user-defined objects in the same way as water or wastewater network objects. In the example report showing here, the SQL is querying the playground objects to determine how many swings, slides and trash bins are located in the playground. This SQL report is possible because the swings, slides and trash bins are component objects of the playground. The SQL report shows there are two of each present in the Kings Road playground. This is useful information when planning what work needs to be carried out by field crews. In this case, how many bins to empty, risk assessments to be carried out on the swings and slides, and to decide if the grass needs to be cut. In the final part of this video, I want to demonstrate extending an existing wastewater collection system network using user-defined objects. In this example, we can see a pump station inside the treatment plant. Inside the pump station there are four component pumps. Both the pump station and the pumps are standard assets in Info Asset Manager and are configured with a built-in component relationship. This means a pump station can have one or more pumps as components. The pump is considered a child of the parent pump station. I now want to add a motor unit to the pumps that will need to be monitored and maintained. A motor unit is not provided as standard in Info Asset Manager, so I've had to create a motor unit as a user-defined asset and established a component relationship to the pump. This means I can add a motor to each of the pumps in the pump station. It also means that the motor is now a child of the pump and a grandchild of the pump station. Zooming further into the pump station, we can now see that the pump has a motor and the motor has a gear. The gear has been added as a user-defined asset and is a component of the motor. The hierarchical components of the pump can be seen in the Object Properties panel on the left-hand side, which is showing a motor's component relationships to both its parent, the pump, and its own child, the gear. With these relationships in place, it is easy to navigate from one to another using the Object Property tool. You'll also notice that a motor in one of the other pumps has a preventative inspection scheduled. The motor inspection is a user-defined inspection object and has an associated rather than a component relationship to the motor, which itself is a user-defined asset. The motor inspection details can be seen in the object properties panel on the right. This motor electrical inspection was raised on the 9th of March 2021 and is planned to be completed on the 17th of March 2021 by Tony A and will be repeated every three weeks. To summarise, in this video you've seen how Info Asset Manager can be extended to manage non-water assets such as those managed by a public works department. Examples of road with safety barriers and street lights and a playground with swings and slides was presented. Furthermore, user-defined inspections, incidents and interventions such as playground and road barrier safety checks, potholes and traffic accidents, grass cutting and pothole repairs were configured alongside the user-defined assets. In the final part of the video, you saw how it is possible to extend existing Info Asset Manager built-in wastewater objects in a treatment plant with a pump station comprising four pumps, each of which have component motors and gears, and these in turn have associated motor inspections and gear lubrication interventions. Thank you for watching. And please look out for a separate instructional video on how to extend Info Asset Manager by configuring user-defined assets, inspections, incidents and interventions.